Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. If you guys have been watching my current series on printing from scan film negatives, and we're gonna be doing some transparencies as well pretty soon, you may have seen that I have been using the XP15000 quite a bit. And that's not because I like it, it's because it really puts out some really, really great quality, pretty much regardless what media I throw at it. So. Today I wanted to touch upon some odd media and that is Kenson uncoated artist type watercolor paper. And this is very heavy. It's 300 GSM or grams per square meter and 90 pounds. That's another rating that they use for paper. I'm going to show you what this looks like. You can get this pretty much any art supply store. I go to Michaels and pick it up right there or Amazon.com. Let me show you. So like I said, because it is an artist paper, it just comes in a pad like this. And very, very stiff. As you can see, thick. So you have to be very careful how you feed it. And often you may have to increase the plate and gap so that you don't have any kind of head strikes. On Canon printers, there is a choice called prevent paper abrasion. And you find that in the maintenance tab of your driver. But anyway, let me show you some previous results that I had dug up because, again, remember I was cleaning up my areas and I'm going to be doing that quite a bit in the next few weeks. Try to organize this place a little bit better because it's really a shambles as it stands right now. So I went to Cape Canaveral a long time ago and I managed to take a really nice photograph. I think, I think it's nice of that. Okay, and you can see how gorgeous that came out. This is, again, on cans and watercolor paper. You can see how rich the colors actually turned out. And remember, because it is not coated, you're going to get a higher degree of dot gain, meaning that if you have really, really fine detail, it may get lost. It may just get lost as the dots spread probably more than they would on a regular inkjet coated paper. But anyway, I think that came out really gorgeous. Let me show you another result. Went to Disney World, you know we are Disney freaks. And during the parade at Animal Kingdom, there is Donald Duck. And you know, that came out very nice as well. And it gives you that painterly type look. So it's a very unique result that you get and you can enhance the results by spraying it after the fact with a spray. You can use Krylon, whatever you wish. I get some art protective type spray. Basically it's meant for charcoal drawings and pencil drawings that you do on common paper. You give it a coat and that keeps the carbon particles or in this case graphite from smudging and allows you to slightly handle it. It's not gonna, you know, prevent it from getting as much, but of course, it just adds a little bit of extra oomph, if you will. It makes it look a little bit deeper. Your blacks will get a bit deeper than they were without the spray. The colors will be enhanced. So when you gotta admit, that looks pretty good, okay? For what it is. And again, it's just this gorgeous paper. Look how stiff it is. It is just stiff as a board. And again, like I said, a little bit difficult to feed. Black and whites, well, there is baby Nathan hugging Pluto with Goofy. You can see it right there. And again, this was done on the Pro 1000 from Canon. And I believe at that point I was just using OEM inks. All right, so let's go ahead and explore what the XP15000 can do. And remember that is a dye ink printer. So compared to a pigment ink printer that uses matte black ink. Okay, so there should be a huge difference, right? Oh, hold on, before we get to that point, because I've already printed the comparison photos. Basically what I did is one of my images that I scanned from negative. And I'm going to show you what the settings that I use for printing were. 
So let's go ahead and jump over to Q image. All right, so here we are in Q image. We'll load the image that we are going to be printing on the Canon Pro 1000 series because it is a Canon printer. You have to activate the use of matte black and that is done by choosing a fine art paper setting. We'll go ahead and do that. And we have already picked the paper. In this case, it's Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte A. And then we're letting it control color. Basically, it's going to apply that particular ICC profile, even though it's going to be a mismatch. But we need some sort of profiling in this case. No problem. Highest quality. And we're going to feed it through the manual feeder in the rear of the printer. Now for the XP15000 settings, we'll go ahead and recall the job. And again, that's the beauty of QImage. You can save as many jobs as you wish. And as you can see, it's pulling up the custom paper size, premium presentation paper matte. And in this case, we are letting the driver control color as well. And that is basically it. Let's go back and take a look at our results. First of all, I want to show you the one using Pro Matte Paper from Canon on the XP15000. And it looks very, very nice. Deep, deep blacks. Really amazing. I'm just, I'm just thrown for a loop when I look at this because I really did not expect this kind of output. Let's go ahead and look at the one with Canson watercolor paper. And it's just a little bit less strong. The blacks are not quite there. Okay, not quite there. Let's look at the Pro 1000 equivalent. So I have that. This is the Pro 1000. This is the 15,000. You can see there's a bit of color change. Again, this is RGB mode. This is using the paper profile. And, you know, very nice results. It does not compare to the XP15000 with the Canon matte paper. It just doesn't. And using black and white mode, let me give you that comparison again. This is Canon photo matte paper. This is Canon uncoated paper. You can immediately see the difference. But again, it's just the look you get. That's that's what is really kind of perplexes a few people when they look at this. And um, it's just another option. I have done a lot of art type prints on it and they're not meant to look photographically correct if you will. In other words, you know, the highest dynamic range is just, it almost reminds me of alternative type photography on the early days during the development of basically light photography many many different forms of image transfer to a substrate were being done back in the days of the civil war here we have again same paper different printer this is pro 1000 you can see it depends the angle i hold it i suppose and this is the xp 15000 So you can see the Pro 1000 is a little bit deeper, of course, because it's triggering the use of matte black. So again, it's just something to, you know, have fun with. I decided to experiment and see what that would look like now. Let's look at what real watercolor paper meant for inkjet printing looks like when you print it. And I'll compare it to the Pro Matte from Canon, which is a lot more, you know, accessible. So the top one... Make sure I got the correct one. Yeah, this is watercolor from Epson. And I don't know whether you can see the texture. Nah, it's hard to see. But anyway, you can see how nice and deep that came out. And yet, this is the matte paper. I'm sorry, this is very bad here. So, real watercolor paper meant for inkjet photography or inkjet printing and the Canon Pro matte paper the commonly available pro matter. And even, even the matte paper that you can get from Staples is very, very good. It's made in Germany and it prints beautifully. And again, you, we're talking a dye ink printer, simply six colors, and you get this kind of neutrality. And linearly, that is, 
across the board. Let me just cover my face. And again, on my left is the pro matte paper, and on my right is the real watercolor paper. There's a certain tonality change, slight as that may be, but still, it's quite, quite nice. And I suppose if I was to print some color images as well, they would also be beautiful. And I'm thinking about, you know, going back and messing around with some of the Epson papers that I have. The way that I acquired a bunch of Epson papers was when I ordered a used 3880 from someone on eBay. It arrived in a practically broken box. I'm so glad that the printer was actually in great shape, but it also came loaded with about 30 boxes of paper. And I got the whole shebang for like $400 which was really, really a good buy. Okay, so as you can see, it is a lot of fun, folks. I'm gonna be doing more. Every time I scan a new negative, I wanna do different things with it. And again, this has got my juices flowing for a change because during this pandemic, I haven't really had much interest, I have to admit, in coming down here and creating something other than just an explanatory video. So I found that album with all those negatives because now I'm going to be going nuts down here. Thank you so much. We'll be doing a lot more. So hang in there and every week I will have a new video pertaining to this that is scanning negatives and printing them and coming up with different aspects as to how you would handle certain images. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, of course, as always, happy printing, happy scanning. Bye-bye, everybody.